Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is John Su. I'm a solutions architect in our education technology technology vertical, otherwise known as EdTech. And I've been with AWS for over three years and in the industry for over 18 years, supporting enterprise customers to startups uh, focused around various infrastructure technologies. Uh, within the last year, I have had a focus in AI and ML. So helping our ed tech customers start evaluating generative AI to incorporate into their solutions. I also help customers innovate faster by bringing in the right strategy or product development teams and other technical resources to reduce the time it takes to bring in new capabilities to market. So the topics that I'll be covering today are just going over how Gen AI is unfolding in, with the machine learning landscape, then going into two ed tech customer use cases and how they've incorporated Gen AI into their solutions, and then just some overview on the challenges around Gen AI, what to look out for and what to consider as you start this journey. So our approach here at AWS for Gen AI is a bit different than some of our other competitors in that we're not focused on consumer facing Gen AI solutions or building first party software applications. And instead, our focus is around being the best possible enterprise platform for builders. So this goes way beyond just having the chatbots and models and um, requires all the tooling for deploying and managing AI at enterprise scale in a secure, performant, and scalable way. And so in addition, when everyone has access to those same foundation models, and you've seen from Sean's presentation and others that that pace of change is so rapid, the key differentiators are going to be around leveraging your own data, that first party content and customizing and tailoring that uh, to outperform you know, what your competitors are doing. So now taking a look at the education sector, there are some concerns that the industry faces around Gen AI, and you can read that here. Uh, security, liability, and cost, skepticism for AI's capability for teaching and learning, data privacy, and the struggle to move to production. However, with that, these generational technologies like Gen AI, it's only a matter of time that standards will be set and we'll see a wave of all companies using Gen AI to some degree within their organizations. So as AI continues to be top of mind for customers, one key trend that is happening is governments and education institutions are finally starting to catch up on all of this Gen AI. So they are issuing policies and guidance on how AI can be used in high stake domains like education and government. And these policies are likely to guide buying decisions and forcing more ed techs and other government techs to align their solutions with them. So these are just some of the examples out there of um, documentation and um, processes around that that's, that's been released in the recent months. Now shifting to understanding where Gen AI can help companies. Uh, these are just some of the key topics where you can look at integrating Gen AI into your product and services. So many ed techs as well as other organizations have started on this path. And in my opinion, tech's use cases for Gen AI are gonna be even more transformative. So much of what we do involves processing languages uh, within meetings and presentations, reading and writing emails, reading documents. So it might take a while, but these foundation models or large language models are just going to completely change software as we know it. So thinking about how we use software today, much of it is spent browsing around, navigating menus, clicking on things, typing words in boxes. So I think what we'll see is a lot of large language models um, replacing a lot of that with conversation as an interface rather than using a visual UI with a mouse or a touch screen to navigate through things. And we see that uh, with a couple of our customer highlights here. So McGraw-Hill, a publishing company that provides educational content 
software and services for pre-K students up through postgraduate education. Um, they help millions of educators, learners, and professionals achieve success. And they have adopted the changes of learning styles. So those have you know, evolved throughout the years. And with that, McGraw-Hill launched their Sharpen study app. And Sharpen is a mobile study app that mimics the types of social media content feeds familiar to young learners to develop, to deliver digestible learning experiences. So it just kind of reinvents how, you know, the younger generation is always leveraging social media and processing information that way. So they'll have a continuous feed with short videos, interactive study tools, and a personalized activity dashboard. So McGraw-Hill worked closely with AWS um, Business and Development Resources through the AWS Growth Advisory Teams as they considered and moved forward with building Sharpen. And the Sharpen team accelerated their roadmap with expertise from AWS's product organization, as well as data science insights, uh, machine learning, prototyping, architecture reviews, and go-to-market planning and execution. So all of this collaboration with the various teams um, included feedback, on-site workshops, and co-delivery uh, to reach the McGraw Hills team's goals. Next, we'll look at Chegg, which is another education technology customer, uh, which is uh, a leading student-first connected learning platform. And they have incorporated Gen AI into their platform to help students learn with confidence. Uh, with the tools that they need to su succeed in this rapidly changing world. So those these solutions include personalized learning experiences and AI-driven tutoring tools, all aimed at enhancing learning outcomes for students. So as part of the collaboration, Chegg is working closely with the AWS product acceleration team to develop a new generative AI-powered learning tool that can provide students with individual learning support. So this assistant is intended to provide students with tailored learning plans that may include features like practice questions, assessments, flashcards, and study guides. So Chegg's culture of innovation is pushing the boundaries of education technology, and it's a powerful tool in helping students succeed on their educational, educational journey. So this is a screenshot here of the Chegg AI uh, that just gives a lot of feedback and personalization um, powered by AWS. Now, some other use cases to consider. So one key aspect on working with these large language models is to set up the correct prompt, otherwise known as prompt engineering. And the goal of prompt engineering is to maximize the model's ability to understand the intent behind the prompt and generate relevant, coherent, and contextually appropriate responses. So this is an example of that um, using RAG that we've talked about in our previous discussions and leveraging the prompt to model what you are looking for. So it's an important skill for anyone using large language models to accomplish various tasks from question answering to creative writing to task completion. So in combination with all the data, it provides meaningful outputs for you. Another area Gen AI has shown is to successfully develop images quickly and provide modifications almost instantaneously through prompting. And so this can help with prototyping games or developing new content for courses. And this has also helped accelerate creative processes for content creators, for rapid development, for just using text to generate images for visual content creation. Gen AI also gives us new and better tools to extract insights from images. So it goes way beyond just identifying an image that has a dog or a cat or a celebrity. But now this model uh, is an example from Hugging Face, where it shows we can extract much more nuanced understanding of what's in an image. And so you can imagine how useful this is for learning content to extract really rich metadata from huge 
media asset libraries um, or to do content moderation. Then the other area to consider Gen AI is in gathering insights from data you may not have even looked at. So this can lead to creation of data, data visualization and exploration uh, to gain insights from complex data sets. So this goes beyond the traditional charting to reveal patterns and relationships uh, to predictive modeling or automated reporting and summarization. So the key advantage of using Gen AI for these tasks is its ability to uncover you know, the non-obvious insights uh, or identifying complex patterns and generating new content in a scalable and automated way. Now, moving on, looking at some of the risk and challenges, um, because Gen AI holds such great potential, there are key concerns to, to keep in mind as you are developing. And these include security and privacy, uh, bias and fairness, transparency and explainability, and accuracy and relevance. So addressing these issues through responsible development, robust governance frameworks, and ongoing research will be crucial as Gen AI systems become more prevalent and powerful. Another area to look at is OWASP, which stands for the Open Web Application Security Project. So OWASP provides a vendor neutral um, co community driven approach to web application security. And it projects to have tools, educational resources uh, that are freely available and widely used by developers and security professionals uh, with organizations around the world to improve the security of web applications. Now they have, in addition to these um, OWASP top 10 for web applications, they recently announced an OWASP top 10 for large language models. And this is to uniquely address the security and privacy threats to AI ML workloads, especially around generative AI. So each of these represents um, a variation on other cybersecurity threats, but they're uniquely presented here in the context of AI ML and large language models. So I won't go through each of these, but you know, some common ones are pro pro prompt injection or model denial of service. So these are things to look at and keep in mind as you're building out in your environments. Lastly, I wanted to share with you the shared responsibility model for Gen AI. So as we take a look here, here at AWS, you know, we're able to help with all types of builders uh, from those who have the traditional machine learning capabilities um, to those just wanting to deploy, you know, quick generative AI without the underlying setup required. So you see this transition here from being able to deploy on your own server with EC2 uh, to using SageMaker, which is our fully managed machine learning service, um, all the way to using Bedrock, uh, that fully managed server that offers choice of uh, foundation models to choose from. So as you iterate through, um, you have less customer responsibility with more built-in best practices. All to help all of our builders um, in whatever capacity they're at. So thank you for your time today to cover the latest on Gen AI for EdTechs, where we looked at changes from traditional you know, machine learning to the rise of the foundation models, uh, to seeing policy changes to provide more guidance and regulations uh, for government and education, uh, to learning about a couple customer use cases and how they've integrated machine learning and Gen AI into their products uh, and looking at other use case and examples. So hopefully that provided some ideas to bring back to your organization on how Gen AI can be incorporated into your own work or solutions. Uh, again, thank you for your time today and please reach out if you have any further questions on how to get started.